Hello, my health and safety professionals. Once again, welcome to Safe Time Online TV YouTube channel. Today, I want us to move on with our syllabus. And uh, currently, we are in the third element that is uh, risk assessment. We are in the third element in the topic or the learning outcome is risk assessment. As we move on, if you have any question from our previous uh, tutorial, kindly forward your question so that I can assist you. So if this is your first time to watch my videos, kindly subscribe to the channel. We are currently learning in a Bosch IGC or International General Certificate. And we are in the second element, though we decided to cover the third element because of some inquiries that many people have been asking for. They need to know how to handle the risk assessment paper two, which is some time giving it hard time to people to handle. So we decided to cover this uh, learning outcome so that it can help my brothers and sisters out there. So we are moving on. We are currently uh, in the risk uh, profiling. And for today's learning outcome, we are only going to look at the purpose of risk assessment. So we defined what risk assessment is. And if we may go back, uh, we are going to define it once again so that we can uh, continue while we know what we, are, what we are talking about for those people who haven't uh, watched the previous videos. So risk, uh, risk assessment is the formal process of identifying uh, the preventive and protective measures by evaluating the risk arising from the hazard, taking into account or the adequacy of any existing control measures and deciding whether or not the risk is acceptable. So the process of identifying the protective and the preventive measures after evaluating all the risks which arise from the hazard which are present in the workplace. So the first, pro the first thing is to identify the hazard. After identifying the hazard, you identify the risks which arises from the hazard. And after identifying the risks, you have to evaluate and look at the protective and preventive measures. So all this process is what referred to as risk assessment. So what is the purpose of risk assessment? That is our today's learning outcome. So what is the reason why you have to do risk assessment? Why do you have to identify the risk? Why do you have to identify the protective and preventive measures? So here is the answer for all these questions. So risk assessment is often a legal requirement. Uh, legal requirement, requirement means this is legally required by the government in each and any each and every state that any work activities in any organization they should be able to do risk assessment and identify all all the risks which are present in that organization and after identifying they should control those risks to an acceptable level so a specific health and sa uh, health and safety law often requires that some of so uh, some sort of specific risk assessment is carried out. This specific risk assessment focuses solely on one type of category of hazard carried by the legislation. So, each and every risk assessment, it check and prioritize on all the risks are uh, all the hazards which are present in the organization and each hazard is given a priority and it is going to be controlled to an acceptable level so there is a law that covers uh, uh that covers 
there is a law that requires that all the managers should do risk assessment in the organization, such as control of substances hazardous to health, regulations, which requires an, access, an assessment of the risk to health of exposure to hazardous substances. So there are specific legal requirements that prioritize on specific hazardous. For example, there is a law which requires managers or the owners of the business to identify the risk which are involved in chemical, the use of chemical, other laws which involve the, uh, uh, the, identif the identification of the hazards which are related to fire, hazards which are related to biological and others. So we are going to see each of them here. So an example of the laws that require the employers to do risk assessment are as follows. The fire risk assessment, which is required under the regulation or regulatory uh, reform fire safety order number 2005. Noise assessment required by the Control of Noise at Work Regulation 2005 also. And lastly, Display Screen Equipment or DSE. Display Risk Equipment. Workstation Assessment required by the Health and Safety DSE Regulation 1992. So these are some of the regulations that require all the managers or the, all the owners of the business to do risk assessment in a specific type of hazard, such as fire, such as noise, such as biological hazard, and such as DSE, display screen equipment. So these are the hazards which involve people who are working directly to a screen, say, let's say CCTV, controllers or any other person who is involved in working on a day-to-day -day, daily activity on a laptop or a, on a computer he is exposed to a risk whereby if not controlled then this person may end up lose his eyesight so in each case the topic specific risk assessment is required because of the technical nature of the hazard and the need to focus exclusively on that one hazard type in order to ensure that the risks are adequ adequately managed. So in contrast, the risk assessment method outlined here is not hazard or topic specific and so can be referred to as a general risk assessment. So most of the businesses, they do general risk assessment. They are not going to do a specific risk assessment. Let's say most uh, organizations are not going to do risk assessment only for chemical. They are not going to do a chemical risk assessment or biological risk assessment or fire risk assessment, they are going to do a general risk assessment which covers all the types of hazards and risks which are uh, present or are inherent in that organization. So uh, the aim of risk assessment is to ensure that hazards are eliminated or risks minimized by the control or the correct application of level standards leg, uh, or, or relevant standards. So the main objective or the main reason for risk assessment is to eliminate the hazard. And here we're going to see all the objectives of risk assessment. Objectives of risk assessment are as follows. They are as follows. Number one, to prevent death and personal injuries. So the most, most important reason for why, as to why risk assessment is done is to prevent death and personal serious injuries. Number two, to prevent other types of loss incidents. So there are some incidents which 
will incur loss to the business or organization. Let's say there is work at height in an organization and underneath this car parking and something happen or any dangerous occurrence happen on top of the work. So if there is some object or some materials that will accidentally fall on the ground, they will eventually break down the vehicles, the cars, and by so doing, this will be a great loss to the organization because the owners of these vehicles will have to be compensated because this is a failure of the organization uh, for not complying to the health and safety rules and regulations. The one which is given most much priority is to prevent death and personal serious injury. Number two, to prevent uh, other types of loss incidents. Number three, to prevent breaches of st uh, statute law which might lead to enforcement action and or prosecution. So the third reason why risk assessment is done is to prevent the breach to statute law or statutory. Statutory means the laws which are governing the health and safety in any given state. In order to comply to these laws, you have to do risk assessment and to control either to eliminate the hazard or to control the risks to an acceptable level. level. Number four, to prevent the direct and indirect cost that follow up on from accidents. So there is direct cost and indirect cost that we already covered in element one that is incurred when an accident has happened. So these objectives relate directly to the moral, legal, and financial argument we discussed in element one. We already discussed in element one that the failure to comply to the health and safety measures, this will involve or will cost directly or indirectly to the organization. Uh, it will be either morally, financially, or legal effect to the organization. So that mark the end of our today's learning outcome. Let's meet in the next video. And now we are going to rush because of time. We are uh, behind time. Therefore, we are going to move very fast to cover this uh, uh, topic so that my brothers out there can get the right assistance. Thank you so much. If this is your first time to watch my video, please don't fail to subscribe so that you can be the first person to receive any notification for a new video that will come. Thank you so much. Let's meet in the next video.